All right, so our second speaker of the night, and I see him all the way in the back there hiding. Our second speaker of the night is Greg McDonald, and he is the founder of Bethorium. He's also an amazing Shopify employee. Um, but here's three fun facts that you're not gonna find out about Greg online. So Greg actually attended Obama's inaugural ball. His biggest fear is somebody touching his Adam's apple. <laughs> Don't do that to him tonight. <laughs> And he used to have a bread bakery business out of his condo. That's kind of a common theme emerging here. All these people starting businesses in their condos. Greg, come on up here and share your fuck up. All right, hey everyone. Um, I want to start off by saying uh, I'm so happy to be here tonight. Emily, wicked presentation. Um, I stole two Sharpies from Shopify a year ago, and I'm like sweating bullets. They're going to come after me each day. So like hearing you at that airport, I was like, I couldn't even remotely fathom that. So thank you for sharing that. That was awesome. Uh, so my name is Greg McDonald. I'm the founder of Bathorium, and I also work here at Shopify. Um, I'm born and raised in Ottawa. Uh, four boys in my family, um, very entrepreneurial. My dad owns a company, my mom's a journalist, freelance. Uh, lots of uncles who own companies and businesses. So entrepreneurship is definitely in my uh, family's history. So started and grew up in Ottawa uh, at 18. I knew I had to leave as every questioning 18 year old boy has to do. You get out of Ottawa really quick. So uh, I moved to Walt Disney World in Orlando, and I worked for the mouse for a year, and uh, just got a year to like live in Orlando and um, party and work for Disney. And after that, I went down to the Cayman Islands. I followed a boy, uh, side fuck up, um, <laughs> lived there for six months. And uh, afterwards, then I realized I needed to come back to Canada and get my school started and, uh, and over with. So I went to George Brown College in Toronto. Uh, George Brown and Ryerson had a joint program back then in uh, business hospitality operations. So I did that. And uh, while I was in school, I was working for the Shangri-La Hotel. So working as a bartender at the Shang here in Toronto. And uh, the summer of 2014, I went to Italy. For uh, six weeks, I backpacked around Europe, started in Ireland, worked my way down to Italy. And uh, when I got to the Amalfi Coast, I uh, stayed at this like Air VRBO um, house rental, whatever, and checked in, started snooping around the, uh, my, the, the owner's house. And in her <laughs> master bedroom, she, or she had this incredible clawfoot bathtub. So I saw this bathtub and I was admiring it. And then I saw next to it, she had this like shelf apothecary that had all these salts and butters and oils and all these things on it. So I started smelling and being inquisitive and overly curious. And uh, she came in and said, can I draw you a bath? And I said, yeah, I've been in hostel showers for six weeks. Uh, I would love this beautiful bath. <clears throat> so she makes me this most incredible tub. So she's adding in coconut milk and different essential oils and salts and clay and she's shaving cocoa butter under hot running water and it was the most like decadent experience ever. So um, I get into this tub and it's the most amazing bath I've ever had in my life. And I call that my Oprah aha moment where you're like, this is what I've meant to do. And uh, so the next week I, I took back um, home to Toronto went back on the bar at the Shang, and uh, my then business partner, <coughs> my now business partner, sorry, Matt Chu, had said, uh, how was Europe? Like, how, how was everything? I said, you know what, it was good, like castles and great food and good wine, but this bath I had in Italy was the most incredible experience. And, and uh, sure enough, Matt Chu and I started um, talking about like, what do we do about this? Like, how do we create that experience I had in Amalfi how do we bring this to the market here in Canada? Because clearly this is experience that, can't, that I've never had before. I was a very avid bath bather. So we started making bath bombs. Um, we started creating them in our kitchen. And, 
and then Bathorium was born. So Bathorium was born, we started our company, um, all was well and good. And uh, we didn't have any experience in really business or in beauty or in chemistry. So everything was really self-taught, very YouTube driven, um, reading blogs, <laughs> trial and error. Um, yeah, so that was our, that was our, uh, that was our start, humble beginnings. Six years later, um, Bathorium is a lifestyle brand. Um, we are in 500 locations across North America, everything from Four Seasons, Ritz-Carlton, Anthropology, The Bay. Um, we've got four full-time staff, uh, 12 part-time staff, contract employees, and uh, we're based back in Ottawa now. So our facility's out in the West End in Ottawa. Um, and our SKU line is pretty uh, broad. We have, it's all bath centric. So it's our bath bombs, our soaks and our bubble bath and our kids line. Um, so that's our full mix. Everything that's like bath time, decadent, indulgent baths that I had in Italy. So the fuck up. <laughs> this didn't come easy. Um, we started the company with a $500 visa. Um, no business doing what we did. Um, we started by um, just kind of going, like just starting, starting, you rip the Band-Aid and you go for it. So I have dry mouth, I had an IPA and it's like, sorry. <clears throat> okay. And there's something worse than you're watching a presentation and it's like a <laughs> So I'm, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so, um, fuck ups. So when I talked to Marsha, um, she's like, choose the fuck up that you think is the most prevalent. So I was like, well, I have a few. So the first was when I was on a TV show, low budget, but they were um, on air. She goes, can you show us how a bath bomb works? So she brings out this pitcher full to the brim and no, no, no regard for water displacement. And um, so I said, okay. So I put the bomb in, it goes everywhere. The camera's like rolling back, all of the like, stuff is pouring into the wires and whatnot. It was just a disaster. They had to like go cut to commercial. <laughs> that was one fuck up. Another one was in 2016, we launched Crush. And uh, at the time, we didn't realize that our bags needed to be vented. So basically it retained moisture. So it created carbon bombs. So all of our retailers started sending us these photos and bags, when people went to go touch them, they would explode. <laughs> Uh, it was a learning moment. <laughs> or I could talk about the time we shot this campaign in Montreal, and it was like, fun girls weekend in the tub. <laughs> and then these ads went to Facebook, and people were like, who are these men misogynistic pigs who run this company? <laughs> like the top one's my favorite. My guess is the chief marketing officer for this company is a man, currently living out his personal fantasies at work. One of those likes is my mom. She thought it was so funny. Oh, God. So those photos now live in the archives. Awful. But the fuck up I wanted to talk about was Good Morning America. <clears throat> So Good Morning America, GMA as I'll like refer to it as is an acronym. Um, it's obviously a show in the States, but they put on this segment called Deals and Steals. So every Thursday and Saturday, they choose four really cool brands for across North America, and they feature them for like this little segment. Tori Johnson, she talks with the product, and she'll be like, oh, this is an amazing product. Um, so great, you have to try it for today only, 50% off everything. So then all of America gets on their tablets and their computers and they buy the product. They don't know what it is, they just want a deal. So they start shopping. So I work for, I work for Shopify. Um, Deals and Steals builds their stores on Shopify. So I knew the success of these, of these uh, stores from everyone talking about it. So I started pitching in 2016. Started sending down product to Tori and Michael Strahan, and uh, saying, you know, this is our brand, this is our product, this is who we are. And they kept coming back saying, you're not ready, your brand's not there yet, thanks for reaching out, 
don't contact us again. And uh, so I kept going and every year and every six months I kept pitching and we kept, you know, we'd launch a new product or we'd change a new packaging or whatever it was. And so I kept pitching to them. And uh, finally in January 2018, I got a call from the producers after our, what I said to be my last pitch. They called me and they said, congratulations, April 18th, you guys are on Good Morning America. And I said, oh my God, it's amazing. Like, I've waited three years for this, this is, or two years for this, and I uh, can't wait. So we start. So we had uh, eight weeks to get ready for the segment. We had to move from Toronto to Ottawa because it was so expensive to have any kind of real estate in Toronto, where Ottawa at the time, or still is fairly cheap. So moved to Ottawa, my family's all there, so I was tapping into a a resource pool of uh, parents and cousins and, and whoever. So we started pumping up the product. And um, on top of producing all this product, we had to set up a US fulfillment house. We had to find capital. We had to find a US TIN number. We had to set up um, a US strategy. We had to figure out so many things that we had never figured out before. So that led to Easter weekend where we had uh, my entire family working uh, like 23 hours a day at Bathorium nonstop, pumping up batches and bath bombs and elixirs. And um, we had to hire employees. We had to bring our employees from Toronto and keep them for um, a week during the segment at hotels. And um, it was just a really mammoth to take on. And so this was our Easter dinner at the uh, at half the studio that we put up and we did it. We, so we shipped out 22,000 kilos of Bathorium product to Chicago, which was where our warehouse was set up. And um, yeah, that went off without a hitch. We had rented a 50 foot, 55 foot uh, trailer, tractor trailer and drove all the product down. And, and then April hit. So the deal went off without a hitch. So it was amazing. Like we, nothing happened. Like all my worst nightmares didn't come through, didn't come true. And uh, yeah, the sale went off without a hitch. We sold 80% of our inventory. All orders shipped out within 48 hours. Everything seemed great. <laughs> dum, dum, dum. <laughs> Everything seemed great. <clears throat> but the issue was is that I grew the company so that we could sustain these large amount of sales. I made so many decisions that increased our operating cost. Um, we, had, we doubled our size. We had to buy over all this equipment. We had to take out a $200,000 loan. We had to open up this facility in the States. We spent so much money on, um, <laughs> on, uh, on, that, on marketing because we thought this buyer like our return rate's pretty good normally at Bathorium. So we thought, well, all these customers that we obtain in the States, they'll come back and buy, right? Like they're gonna love our product, they'll come back. These people are deal shoppers. They only buy at 50% off. So we did 7,000 customers that day. I think we've had five come back to the site. We were anticipating 60%. We then, um, things just started adding up. And um, our company started losing money really quick. Our sales that, that I thought were coming in that we had depended upon weren't. I thought, wow, this is amazing. We'll get so much exposure to all these new retailers. They'll be, they'll be blowing up our door. They'll be coming at us. They didn't come. And what I realized was that all the money that we had pulled out and everything we had grown to withstand, there was no sales to, to back that up. Now the issue, the real issue was that 
everyone, like friends that I had had talked to since high school said, oh my God, I saw Bathorium on GMA. You must be killing it. Your brand is so hot. And my ego got in the way. I said, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. It's amazing. It's so great. And then that's when the lies start internally because then you start to bleed these conversations. When people are saying, oh, your company's so hot. You must be so proud of yourself. You're, this, this company is growing rapidly. I'm seeing you everywhere. You got great exposure. Like, these, these accolades come from your networks, but they don't know what's really happening. They didn't know that my company was in free fall. I didn't know how I was making payroll. I didn't know how we were gonna pay rent. Like, I was stricken with anxiety. I didn't want to, I couldn't listen to music. I couldn't eat. I couldn't even talk to my friends because all they wanted to talk about was uh, the success of Bathorium and like, what's happening now? And I just, I, I shunned away and I wouldn't let anyone in. I felt like I had no one to talk to. And it was really a really alone time. And I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs in this crowd can relate to that like feeling of isolation sometimes because there's no one to, there's no one above you. When you own that brand, there's no one above you to say, hey man, we're gonna need some more help here. It's like, it all falls on your shoulders. And um, I went to a really dark place. I couldn't even take baths, and that was code red. <laughs> because baths were triggering. It was like, I, I didn't want to bring myself joy. So I was mentally broken. Everything I felt like was just really, uh, really crumbling without me, but no one knew what was happening. <sighs> and then the light. So one day, finally, my mom said, and she goes, Greg, what are you, you going to do with all this money you made? She's like, what are you going to do? Like, how are you going to celebrate all this success? I said, Mom, like, I've cashed out my RRSP to pay rent this month for my company. And I broke. And I really just was so honest with her, told her everything. And then after that, I told my dad, my brothers, my friends, people at, like at Bathorium didn't even know. I told everyone. I really started to let people in. And then I felt the weight leave my shoulders. It was like half the battle was gone. Once you let people in, you would be, you'd be so surprised how helpful people were ready to be or how supportive your network's. Like, they don't care if it's successful. They want it to be successful, but it doesn't reflect you. They're not going to like you less if you fucked up. And that's the lesson I had to learn <laughs> the really hard way because I thought, I thought the worst. I thought everything would crumble and no one would ever look at me again if, if they knew the truth. So yeah, I, uh, I let people in and with that, I started thinking clear. We made action plans. We started thinking more positively. We started creating um, different campaigns to how do we recapture this group of customers who buy at 50%, we segment them. We do our own 50% sale. We clear out that inventory that's been sitting in Chicago that we've been paying a massive amount of warehousing fees for. Like, we figure out ways to make it work. And sure enough, we did. And, you know, the power of positive thinking, then anthropology came, and a lot of really great wins came um, after really just starting to move the dial and, and change the narrative of, of the situation. And, uh, yeah, things... Then that moved into our busiest season, thankfully, and things really, uh, really, really turned around for us. So we were very, I'm very thankful um, for this experience. It really taught me a lot, and um, it's taught me so much that we're actually back on Good Morning America this Saturday. <laughs> Woo! Ooh! Am I stressed? Yes. <laughs> but are we doing it right? Hell yeah! Yeah, we're making, so every mistake we made the first time, we're not making now. And uh, so, that, so everyone tune in, Saturday morning, GMA, 8 a.m., um, you'll see the full shebang again. So we're very excited. And um, yeah, so for, since it's Valentine's Day, I do have one relationship, fuck up, that relates, that pulls into this. So when we were at Queen and Bathurst is where our facility used to be, right above the Starbucks there, if anyone knows what I'm talking about. And uh, so we used to make a couple of our product lines in there. And so my boyfriend at the time, he used to always come by and drop off a coffee here and there. Or he'd like deliver lunch or like a cute hello, whatever. So when he came the first couple of times, I'd be like, hey, like since you're here, do you mind just 
helping me with this or making this bath bomb batch. I'm really behind. So then he, he'd drop off a coffee and he would start working. <laughs> and then it turned into like, well, since you're leaving, do you mind bringing this wagon of products down to Canada Post? He's like, uh, yeah, sure. And then by the end of our relationship, he came in, dropped his coffee off, put his apron on, and he'd work like a four hour unpaid shift. <laughs> like, it became this like really weird thing where I was like, I don't really like him anymore, but it's free labor <laughs> and a coffee. <laughs> Phil, if you're here, I don't even know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so that was a relationship fuck up. It taught me to let you have to separate work and pleasure. Um, and that's, uh, that's my fuck up. Amazing story, Greg. Thank you so much for sharing that. I love how it came full circle. You fucked off the first time on GMA. You're doing it again. You've learned your lessons. So excited to see you rock it on Saturday and all the amazing things that are going to come out of that. So let's open it up to some Q&A for Greg. I'm sure you guys are going to have some great questions on this story. All right. We're going to have a Do mic come to you. Hi. Hey. My name is Alexa. Nice to meet you. <laughs> um, your story is really inspiring. Um, what was kind of the first few steps that you took kind of being in a really tough financial um, position and like kind of how you got out of it? Because I find like that's kind of the scariest part. Yeah, for sure. Like the first step was looking at where we were hemorrhaging money. Like where are we spending money that doesn't make sense that we've just done because we've always did it that way um, was the first way we really looked at our expenses. Um, and two, it was like I relied on too many external people for things like our sales and just things I, I was relying on and they were kind of dropping the ball. And I was like, I read a quote once and it was something about like um, when things get nasty, tie your hair in a bun, put gangster rap on and get shit done. <laughs> Maybe it was from Shopify. But um, I mean, I have no hair to tie in a bun, but it was one of those things where I was like, I'm just gonna hit the ground running. And I took our lead list from, C uh, from uh, our HubSpot CRM and I contacted every single per like store, spa, salon that had expressed any interest in the company. And I was like, hey, this is Greg, this is my story, this is our brand, How can I hook you up with an opening order? And um, I really just took back control and got messy, like got my hands dirty and, and made it happen. Hi, uh, my name is Taz. Um, I'm just wondering, you mentioned that you work here at Shopify, so how did you get back into the job market? Why, how does that work with um, running a business and having a job? For sure, I mean, Shopify is the most unique company um, out there. It's the only company that lets you run a successful side hustle and also work full time for them. Um, so it's a give and take, like Shopify, uh, they, we beta, they beta test all their products on Shopify store. I speak with a lot of like R&D teams, um, a lot of feedback on new products. So it's a give and take that way in terms of um, the actual role. And my role here at Shopify, I work in the cannabis division. So I work with a lot of the East Coast provinces. So when I'm traveling, like I kind of isolate myself from Bathorium. I focus on Shopify and reverse. Like when I'm at Shopify, sorry, I'm at Bathorium, I shut myself off from Bathorium. And... Uh, you get the point. And uh, <laughs> that didn't make sense. Um, but I time block quite a bit. And yeah, I mean, all I've ever known is extreme chaos. Like when Bathorium, when I first got hired at Shopify um, five years ago, Bathorium, we made like 500 bucks a month. Like that was a really good month. And um, so it was, a, it was a glorified hobby. And then Shopify was a full-time business. But Shopify five years ago was very different. Like we had one office in Kitchener, Waterloo that I worked out of and it was like a second floor of a, a Denny's. Like it was a, a very different atmosphere than what you see here. So all I've ever known is this extreme chaos as Shopify has exploded into what it is today and Bathorium, like all I've ever known is this like nonstop craziness. So I'm still enjoying the ride. Uh, I have the microphone, so I'm just gonna sneak in there. Um, hello, fellow Shopify family. 
Just for the record, uh, Kelp Serenity Crush is amazing. Oh, nice. And I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a big bather, huge fan. Uh, <laughs> I actually bought that in Victoria at a hair distributing place because I used to be a hairstylist before I was working for Shopify. Oh, cool. So I was wondering how challenging was it for you to break into the retail market and get into other stores and also especially into selling to spa professionals? Yeah. I mean, that was a strategy we chose very early on. Um, so we chose that spa market because people like the spa, they could use our product and back bar service. They would use our soaks and like foot care, foot care mm -hmm. basins or like actual soak, uh, bathtub soaks that they have in their treatment rooms. So there's a huge opportunity there that when you try a little bit of it, you're going to like the experience, like the smells and what it does to the water. You're going to want to buy the, like the full size or the different varietals. Um, so we made that choice very early on and we, partnered with the ESI, so it's the Esatique Spa International, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, so the conference is three times a year, three different cities, um, and it exposes us to a lot of really great spa owners across Canada. And that's where it's really grown our, our retail market quite a bit. And I mean, when you land a couple big fish, all the little fish could come crawling. Like you get into one hotel, the other hotels want you. You get into one really great place in town, the other places in town want you. So we kind of just chose those leaders in those cities and went after them. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit about uh, US market versus Canadian market? And how are you going to deal with the mess that currently is US sales tax collection? Oof. Well, my accountant is at the back there. Paul, raise your hand. <laughs> he's, he's our tax guy. So he'll, he'll take care of the, the US tax question. But we don't, have, um, we don't have a nexus in the States anymore. So we used to have that Chicago warehouse from the first sale. Um, so we had to collect tax in the States. Um, if that kind of answers your question, I'm sorry. But, um, but in terms of like US and, and Canada, like, so in the US, we partner with FabFitFun quite a bit. It's a subscription box, amazing exposure, um, like lots of like Z-list celebrities holding your product, like Tori Spelling and um, what's his name from, um, uh, what's his name? I'm gonna talk about him all the time. He's the guy from the 90s, He's like much music. Emily, you loved him. Um, uh, he like Spencer Pratt, Spencer Pratt. So they got him to like hold our product up and stuff. Um, and uh, so we get great exposure that way through Fafit Fund. So it just exp it spurs lots of sales from their their network of people. Um, but yeah, we ship everything from Canada, and it hasn't been a huge focal point the U.S. yet. But in 2020, it's one of our uh, one of our main focus points. Sorry. Most of the sales are in Canada, uh, yes, yes, Great. yeah, Canada and the States, but mostly, mostly Canada. So we'll do one final question. I know somebody has the mic at the back there. Hi, I'm Emily. Hey. Um, I just wanted to ask for Good Morning America this weekend, what exactly are you doing differently so you don't make the same mistakes, but you can still get the mass amount of product you need? For sure, yeah, that's a great question. So. One of the biggest mistakes we made was we, um, we spent so much in retargeting and in adding in like inserts to all the packages. We used custom bathorium tissue and custom bathorium stickers and the whole unboxing experience. But the deal shopper, like the person who's buying the segment, lives in Oklahoma, she's a mom of six, and she's just like storing product in their bunkers. Like it's, it's a very different shopper. <laughs> than like what we're used to. Like the shopper that we're used to is like a bit more of a, a green conscious, eco-friendly um, beauty shopper. So when they do these segments where it's like 50% off everything, good morning America, um, we understand that shopper now. So now everything's in like brown boxes, brown paper, brown tape, <laughs> Amazon style, Bezos, Bezos Highway. And um, so we've changed that away. And then we've also looked at previous sales data from GMA the first time. And we had a lot more West Coast sales. So we underestimated that. So with our ship, Bob, which was our first uh, partner in the States, um, they gave us this huge rate to ship to the California and whatnot. But we said, or a ABC said, we're more popular on the East Coast. So focus more on the East Coast. Well, we actually had 40% of our sales come from California. So some packages cost $21 US to ship, but the value of the order was 18, so we'd lose three bucks. So we, uh, 
it, just, it was just all of really bad mathematical equations. So this year, we've got all planned out. We're doing more heat mapped um, shipping rates and shipping zones, and we've got you know, product actually sitting in San Francisco, product sitting in Chicago, product sitting in Ottawa that we're gonna ship the sale from. So um, those are the, kind of the two biggest ways that we're improving this sale. And we're only using our, our cash cow products. So we're not actually featuring our most expensive products on the sale to produce, um, where that was a huge mistake last time. Perfect, really great lessons. Thank you again for sharing your Thank story, you. Greg.